Dreallday.com. What's up, everybody? Dre Ball and DreAllDay.com. Somebody asked me this in a comment to a video I had posted today. This ain't coming out the day I recorded it, but somebody asked me when did I start lifting weights, and I thought it'd be a good idea to just make a quick vid just to tell y'all the story of how I got into lifting weights and what happened from there. So if y'all want to hear a little, this ain't really that deep of a story. I didn't really think it was that interesting of a story, but if y'all are interested in me sharing like these little stories some small things that happen that might be more than small things to y'all, let me know and, and let me know what kind of topics you want to hear me talk about and I'll do more videos like this because this is very simple for me to tell these stories. So this was my freshman year of college and to go to a little bit back in the story, I had never touched a weight before in my life. Like growing up, I had never been around the weight room. Like the neighborhood I come from, the rec center we used to play at, there was a weight room but it was like, you had to go through the office where the coaches hung out and then you had to go like three rooms back and there was a weight room back there with some weights in it and it did actually have equipment but that joint was so deep back in the halls of the office of the building that people didn't even know it existed and nobody used it on a regular basis nobody at all not even the people that worked there so it was buried so deep that nobody lifted weights and then in high school i went to this high school i'm from philadelphia so i went to this high school in north philly called engineering and science high school of engineering or ens and back then the school has actually been renovated since then so they probably have a useful weight room now but the weight room they had back then was just trash it was like this small ass room it was like the size of a, if you go to the gym and you go in the bathroom it was like the size of the bathroom not the whole locker room but the bathroom so <laughs> and it had a few cable machines and some weights and the fact of the matter is even if you wanted to lift weights a lot you had such limited access to the room that you couldn't lift at all so i never and i didn't want to lift weights a lot then i didn't know nothing about lifting weights so i never touched the weight room so when, the, when i got to college i still hadn't touched the weight before i started to have a little bit of definition to my body because i just have an athletic body and i was very active so i was like cut but i didn't have muscles i didn't have any strength whatsoever and i remember this one particular game that year we was playing against some team and they had this white dude i was sticking he was like maybe an inch taller than me but he was way stronger than me so the coach had put me in the game to guard this dude and when the team the other team seen me guarding him they all white they did like the four out so it was four guys on the perimeter and they put this one dude they just planted him under the basket and they just lobbed this pass to him and even though i was way more athletic than him i could out jump him he just put his body on me and just sealed me off from getting around him caught the ball and made a layup and then he did it again. They did it like two plays in a row. <laughs> and the coach took me out of the game. He, he wasn't mad at me because he was like, you know, I can't even be mad at you. He didn't say that, but I'm, I could just tell by his his demeanor that he's like, I can't even be mad at you. Dude's just stronger than you. It ain't really, you didn't do anything wrong. You just got out muscled by a guy who's stronger than you. So after the season, the basketball coach, this is my freshman year at Penn State Abington. My coach was a dude named Mo Williams. And he said after the season, he was just giving me a quick review. He was like, you know, you need to get better at understanding the plays, understanding the concepts. You know, you need to be more consistent with working hard and practice, like bringing the energy. And you need to get stronger. You need to get stronger so you don't get you no know, muscled out by guys who are, are not even better than you. But even though you're athletic and you have a lot of skills, basketball skills and talent, your strength is going to hold you back from being able to compete with some guys. They're just going to use their strength against you. So you need to eliminate that weakness. So I was like, all right, cool. So after the season, sometimes I was still going to the gym on the Abington campus and I would just play basketball with whoever came in there. Because back then on that campus, a lot of our players, they wasn't even serious about basketball. Like they would play, pick up before the season. Before the season, they would come in like two or three days out of the five days of the week and play pickup. A lot of those dudes who was on the team didn't even play pickup because they didn't really love playing ball like I did. I would be in there every day, so I would just play with whoever. I'd be in there playing with some bum dude who was like a, a chemistry major, six foot Asian who couldn't even jump, but he was the only dude in there playing, so I'd just play with whoever was in there. So I'd be in there like busting their ass and stuff. And after the season, after basketball season ended, I didn't see nobody on the basketball team again for the rest of the year. Because all I did was go to my classes and hang out in the gym. So if they wasn't in the gym, I wouldn't see them. And they never came in the gym. When the season ended, them dudes just disappeared. I never saw them again. Like to this day, I still haven't seen none of them dudes because they stopped coming to the gym after the season ended. Because they didn't really love ball like that. Like they loved it being on the team. But once it was over, they wasn't, they wasn't the type of dudes who would play ball 
just to play ball. Like that's the kind of guy, you know, I would play no matter what, even if I wasn't on the team. So they stopped showing up. So I would be in there playing ball with these bum dudes. Like it'd be some fat dude that couldn't even touch the backboard. Dudes who was just, just regular dudes who just went to school, you know. So they just love basketball. They'd be in there playing with jeans and Tim's on. And I'd be in there playing these dudes one-on-one. -on -one. I'd be playing pickup with these guys because they was the only guys there. So it was this one dude, he was from New York. And he took a liking to me because he knew a couple guys, a couple of the older guys from the team. And he saw me, he didn't know me, but he took a liking to me because he could see that I had game and he knew that I kind of understood the game. And he could tell by, you know, just the way I carried myself that I was kind of from a similar background as he was. He was from New York City. And mind you, around this time, this is the year 2001. So this is around the time when the M1 mixtape and all the street ball guys became really popular and everybody was talking about that. And like a lot of people was learning about Rucker Park and the EBC and all that. So that's what everybody was talking about. This is when M1 was first putting out the, the VHS tapes, DVDs. And mind you, there was no YouTube back then. And the internet wasn't even that big. So he would, he would talk to me sometimes. He would tell me stories about these street ball guys. Like, yeah, I seen Skip the Malu playing at Rucker. And I seen this guy and that guy. He would name all these guys off the M1 tape. He'd be like, yeah, I seen these dudes in the leagues in New York. Now, I know he was telling the truth because in New York, I, don't, I never lived in New York, but I know in New York is a ton of outdoor courts and that's what everybody do. They play ball outdoors. And in the summertime, you just go to all the leagues and you just watch these dudes play or you play them. So he would tell me about these guys all the time and he would come to me after the season because he'd be in a little weight room. At Penn State Abington, the weight room was generally pretty small too. It wasn't that much bigger than the weight room at my high school, but they had better equipment at Penn State Abington. So he would always be in the weight room lifting and sometimes he would come out the weight room, you know, when you lift him, like you do a set, you might you not need to like walk it off like three, four or five minutes before you do your next set. So it's not like you just lifting the whole time. You got to like chill in between sets. So sometimes when he was chilling in between sets, he would walk out the weight room and the weight room is like 10 feet away from the basketball court. And it's not a door to get to the court. It's like an open space. You just walk straight through the hallway. You on a basketball court. So he would see me in there playing with these bums. And one day he came in there after the season. This is after the season had ended. I'm 19 years old at the time. He saw me. He was like, yo. He looked around the dudes I was playing with. He's like, yo, come in here, man. Come on in here. Why is you in there playing with them? Like, And then when he pulled me over to the side, he's like, look, you know you're not going to get no better playing with them, right? And I was like, yeah, you're right. Because I'm the type of guy. I'm an open-minded individual. So I'm not the type of person who gets a certain idea and thinks that that's the only way it can be done. I'm open to listening to somebody who could possibly know something more than me. So he was like, you know you're not going to get no better playing with them. So if you ain't going to be in there practicing by yourself, like actually working on your game, like doing pull-ups and dribbling and you know working on your actual skills, playing with them is not going to make you better. So why don't you come in here and lift with us? I want to show you some stuff. I was like, cool. I'll lift. I'll, you know, I'll listen to this because I remember what my coach Mo had told me. Like, yo, you need to get your strength up. So I'm like, all right. And maybe Mo had told him to. I don't even know. So he came in there, he brought me in the weight room and there was this other dude in there, this other black dude. He was about my height. He didn't play ball at all. He never came in the basketball gym, but I would see him all the time because whenever I was in the athletic building, he'd be in there, but he'd be lifting. And he was like a serious lifter. You could just tell by the way his body looked, just by the way he carried himself. He was serious about his lifting. Like he had his headphones on. He had that serious look on his face and he'd just be getting it in. So he was in there lifting. He introduced me to that guy. I don't even remember these guys' names actually. And he started showing me lifting. I remember the first time they put me on a bench to do a bench press. He put <laughs> he put 135 on there, which is the bar plus 245 pound weight plates, like the basic lift for somebody who's just lifting. I could not lift that thing. I could not lift it at all. I could barely get it off the rack. That's how weak I was back then. So they put a lighter weight on there, you know, and I started lifting. I started getting a little bit. I started understanding a little bit how the lifts work. So really what they did was show me some new lifts because I didn't even know how to lift weights. I didn't know how nothing worked. I didn't know proper technique. I remember the first time I was doing, I don't remember what exercise he had me doing and I was like holding my breath to do it. And there was this white dude in there who was kind of lifting with me. He was like, dude, breathe. <laughs> and I ain't know nothing about none of this stuff. So they taught me like, you know, make sure you breathe when you're doing your lifts, showed me how to do a bench press. The first time he tried to get me to do this thing, I think they call it skull crushers or triceps extensions where you take the, the dumbbell and you put it back behind your head and you just go up like this. The first time he tried to show me how to do that, I tried to grab like this 25 pound dumbbell. He was like, no, no, grab this. And he put his hand on the 40. 
I was like, man, I can't lift that shit. I can't do no 40 pound tricep extension. So he let me get away with like a 30 or 35 or something like that. But he was really trying to push me like, you know, lift. Cause he was looking at me like at my size. He thought I could lift like not as good as him, but close. I wasn't even halfway what this dude was doing. This dude was picking up and it was two of them. It was two black guys who used to be in there all the time. And that day in particular was one dude, but they used to be in there lifting crazy. Like dude would take what most guys would be bench pressing and he was curling it. Like he was curling 135 with the bar like like it was nothing. They was they do uh, deadlifts, curls, squats. He was doing all kinds of lifts. And this is in his small ass weight room at Abington. So I know he wasn't new to lifting. So they really introduced me to the weight room. And that weight room actually, even though it didn't have a lot of free weights, it had the whole dumbbell rack and it had the bench press, one bench press. Besides that, it wasn't a lot of other free weights. Mostly it was all machines. So I learned like, of course the machines are pretty self-explanatory. You just look at the pictures and follow it. So I started using the machines more. And then even after those guys was gone, cause in the summertime, a lot of them wasn't around. That summer, summer of 2001, I used to go up to the campus every single day cause that was my gym. I didn't have a gym membership. I went to that campus every single day from, cause Penn State Abington is a commuter campus, which for those who don't know, that means there's no dorms. There's no on-campus housing. So I lived at home, like in my parents' house, my freshman year of college. So I would drive from home to school every day. So in the summer, I just did the same thing. It was like 20 minutes away. So I would drive up to Abington and just work out on the court and in their weight room. And it would be dead empty. I mean, nobody. That place was like a damn ghost town all summer. And this is a huge, they had a huge basketball gym, six courts, polished floor, and it'd be empty all day. Nobody ever came in there. So I just spent that whole summer in there working on my game. I would go in there and lift first and then I would go work on my game on the court. And I would just start, I taught myself a few lifts. Like I took, the, I remembered all the lifts that they showed me, like the bench press and I slowly like started adding more weight. A lot of times actually I was really just using the machines a lot. So I added a lot of size that summer, but it wasn't actual strength really. Cause I, the size, the, the size I got from using the machines it made my muscles bigger. But I wasn't really developing that really good functional strength, the stabilizer muscles that you build by using free weights. And I'm not an expert in explaining that, but um, if you don't know what that means, you can look it up and ask somebody who knows strength training as a profession, their expertise, and they can explain it to you. Basically, to give you a, a brief explanation, if you do a, a chest press and you do 200 pounds, that does not mean that you could do a bench press at 200 pounds because it requires the use of stabilizers when you're doing a free weight because all your other muscles got to make sure that weight doesn't fall on your chest and kill you. Whereas when you're using the machine, if you fail to push that 200, you just let it go when it comes back and you don't injure yourself. So it was a different, a different set of muscles entirely that have to get used in addition to that one isolated muscle. When you're using the machine, there's only one muscle, but when you're using the free weight, there's a bunch of different muscles that got to stabilize your body so that you can actually do the movement just to give you a brief overview. But again, I'm no expert at that. So that's how I really got into lifting weights. By the time I got to my sophomore year, I was at Penn State Altoona. I had a nice physique. Like I had some size, I had some muscle on me and people was looking at me like, all right, I could tell dude be lifting. So then, then from there, I just kept lifting a little bit more. I kept learning new stuff. I go in the weight room, I look at somebody who was bigger than me, who had muscles and I see what lifts that they was doing. And then I try that lift, maybe not on the spot. I might wait till like the next day. So he wouldn't think I was copying them, but I watch them on the side, then I try that lift. And that's eventually how I just learned how to do new lifts. And I start reading magazines. I take lifts out of like a fitness magazine or a muscle and fitness magazine. And I try that. And that's how I just how learned how to do more lifts. So that's my story of how I got acquainted with the weight room and strength training. If y'all want to hear more of this stuff, more of these small stories, I thought this would be shorter than it is. But if you want to hear more of this type of stuff, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want me to talk about. Work on your game. Dre all day. And checking out this video. Make sure you follow all my top content up here. Follow me on all your favorite social networks right over here. And make sure you are subscribed to catch all the new content I put on on this channel every single day. Work on your game.